Good evening. Thank you very much for joining the NRDC Action Fund this evening. My name is Melissa Harrison, and I'm the Communications Director for the Action Fund. Tonight's program will include remarks from the NRDC Action Fund Director, Heather Taylor Meesley, and Reckless author, Bob Deans. Following Bob's remarks, we will open it up for an interactive Q&A. So please start thinking about which questions you would like to ask Bob before this evening's over. Uh, following the Q&A, Bob will also be available to sign any purchased copies of Reckless, and he'll be doing so at the table here, so feel free to line up. I now have the pleasure of introducing the director of the NRDC Action Fund, Heather Taylor Meesley. As director, Heather guides the organization's strategies to build an environmental majority focused on clean energy and promoting our environmental safeguards. Heather has more than 13 years of experience in federal politics, both as a public interest lobbyist and on Capitol Hill. Prior to taking on the role of director for the NRDC Action Fund, she had her own consulting business and previously was the deputy legislative director at the Natural Resources Defense Council. Prior to her position at NRDC, Heather worked on Capitol Hill, first as an aide to then congressman and now former Ohio Governor Ted Strickland. She then worked as a senior staff member for current Labor Secretary Hilda Solis. During her time on Capitol Hill, Heather also helped co-found the Democratic Caucus Environmental Message Team, which continues to help Democratic members communicate more effectively with their constituents about environment and energy issues. Heather is married with two beautiful children and currently resides in the Silicon Valley in California. Please welcome Heather. Good evening. Thank you for joining us this evening to celebrate NRDC Action Fund's first book release of Reckless, the Political Assault on the American Environment, written by staffer Bob Deans. Please join me really quick in just giving him a round of applause. <laughs> Bob's always a joy to, to work with, and so it's always good to, to recognize that kind of dedication and uh, just general uh, civility in, in this business. So often we deal with so many fights that it's uh, nice to, to be dealing with a gentleman, Bob. Uh, also, even better to be dealing with an informed gentleman. I came to the environment on a gymnasium floor. I grew up in Ashland, Kentucky, uh, where the Ashland Oil Refinery is stationed. You see our school was literally the, the playground was eye level with the top of the refinery's smokestacks. And so my first memory of caring about the environment was sitting on a green gymnasium floor listening to the parents argue about why exactly their kids were getting sick. Why were there cancer clusters? And so I remember my mom saying that this is about the environment, yes, but this is about my kid. I think that what is so interesting about the environment is that when it comes down to it, it's always about our kids, right? The people who gathered in that gymnasium with that big old green floor had nothing to do with Democrats. They had nothing to do with Republicans. They were parents. The environmental issues that Bob talks about in his book are not ones that really have to do with partisanship at all. They're the conversations that we hold in gymnasiums. They're the conversations that we hold at our kitchen tables. The majority of folks who want to protect the environment are really just trying to protect their children. The NRDC Action Fund is all about rebuilding the environmental majority. That has very little to do with Democrats or Republicans. Well, I honestly can't think of a better time to release this book. As we are just a few days away from celebrating Earth Day 2012, Reckless is a strong reminder that by working together, we're able to come a long way to protecting the environment. We must come together again to stop any and all attempts by Congress to move environmental and health standards backwards, and this can only be done through cooperation with members of both sides of the aisle, members who are really, rather, are really re ready to gather around the kitchen table. Tonight is truly a special honor for me as we launch Reckless, but also as we honor its author, my colleague, Bob Deans. Bob joined the NRDC Action Fund after spending nearly three decades as a newspaper reporter 
including a stint as chief Asian correspondent for the Atlantic Journal Constitution and other Cox newspapers. As former president of the White House Correspondents Association, Bob Deans is the author of the 2007 book, The River Where America Began, A Journey Along the James. He's also the co-author of the 2009 book, Clean Energy Common Sense, An American Call to Action on Global Climate Change, and the 2010 book, In Deep Water, The Anatomy of a Disaster, The Fate of the Gulf, and Ending Our Oil Addiction. A native of Richmond, Virginia, Bob lives with, in Bethesda, Maryland, with his wife and three children. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Bob Deans. Thank you so much, Heather, and, and thank you all for coming out here tonight. Um, special welcome uh, to the folks from C-SPAN TV. Thank you so much for being with us here tonight. I want to recognize my uh, publisher from Roman Littlefield, John Sisk. Uh, John, this is our third book together. Um, not everyone involved is still speaking to each other, but you and I fortunately <laughs> are. Um, John has the perfect set of sensibilities for a book publisher. He has the mind of an ancient philosopher and the heart of a riverboat gambler, so that's what we like about John. <laughs> and he has the world's uh, greatest production editor, Darcy Evans, who somehow manages at once to be tenacious, meticulous, and mercifully forgiving. Thank you, Darcy. I want to say a special uh, thank you also to some people who've worked very hard these past few weeks to make this a great night. Uh, my colleagues, of course, Ed Chin and Lisa Katapano, Suzanne Struglinski, Liz Hyde, Melissa Harrison and Corey McKee, thank you all very much for your hard work. I really appreciate that. I send you greetings uh, tonight from NRDC Action Fund President Frances Beinecke, who wishes she could be with us tonight but was not able to be here. I want to also say thank you to our Executive Director, Peter Lehner, for his support, and of course to the heart and soul of the entire NRDC family, our founder, John Adams. I also want to say a quick thank you to Robert Redford for uh, writing the magnificent forward to this book and to former Congressman Sherry Bollert for writing our preface. I'm grateful for that as well. Here in Washington, no writer toils alone. This book is based on the efforts of everyone in the NRDC Action Fund. In so many ways, this book reflects the work of you all. Those of you who have stood up for nature, some of you for years, some of you for decades, telling the truth about the threats to our environment. Those of you who have labored to find the policy solutions we need to take us forward. Those of you who use our laws and our courts to hold polluters accountable to the public we all serve. Telling the truth about the threats, developing the policy solutions that guide us forward, and holding polluters accountable. That's what environmental leadership means. That's what the NRDC family is all about. I could stand here tonight and name one staffer after another who embodies this ethic for us all. And yet in this past year, in these difficult times, there is one person whose work truly represents the best of all we do, work that inspired me throughout the creation of this book. And so I want to say for that a very special thanks to our senior attorney and clean air director, John Walk. These are challenging times for our country. Times of great opportunity, yes, but times of many obstacles as well. Over the past year, we have struggled with historic debt and the enduring fallout from the worst recession since World War II. U.S. troops are fighting their 11th grinding year in Afghanistan, and U.S. forces have just returned after eight years of war in Iraq. Many of our closest European allies are facing economic ruin. The Middle East has been remade by democratic street revolutions that have stretched to the gates of the Kremlin. And income inequality worldwide has turned the Occupy Wall Street movement into a global movement. Amid turmoil, challenge, opportunity, and change, which of these pressing issues commanded the attention of the United States House of Representatives? Putting our fiscal house in order, defeating our battlefield foes, 
shoring up our transatlantic partners and friends, addressing the yawning gap between rich and poor. What single action 